having peace in the midst of all the the chaos that we see going on around us. You know, as it was read read for us in Psalm 46:10, very simply in the wisdom of that writer he says be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And one more if you go just a a little further into the book of Psalms of Psalm number 62 starting at verse 5 it says my soul wait silently for God alone for my expectation is from him he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense i shall not be moved in God is my salvation and my glory the rock of my strength And my refuge is in God. When we turn on the news today, when we listen to the radio, when we open up whatever news app we have on our devices, and we see all of the things that are going on in the world, and we wonder just just what it's coming to. We wonder, you know, what, what hope is there? It seems as though... Uh, every time we turn around that we're being told about something else that is going on in this world that is horrible. But uh, as these times are filled with all of this noise and chaos, we have Christ. And in Christ we can find a peaceful silence. We can find a peace that, as we're told in the scriptures, surpasses all understanding. I can't explain it to you. I don't have the words or the ability. If you think about it, chances are your mind will swim in the, in the idea of the peace that you get in Christ. It is something that, that uh, no matter what comes at us in this world, if we have our focus in the right place, we understand that there's something better for us after all of this chaos is over. On the, on the slide there on the screen, I chose a picture of New York City. And this is a picture from Central Park. And uh, as I was thinking about what slide I would use for this opening slide, what picture, what image, I was thinking about that. And several years ago, my family and I, we had the opportunity. Uh, a friend of ours had an apartment in New York, and, and they allowed us to use the apartment uh, during the Thanksgiving weekend. Thanksgiving holiday, and we went to the parade on Thanksgiving Day, uh, because all New Yorkers that can do it leave the city during that chaotic time, and I've never been in such a pressed crowd in my life, and I used to work security at a large concert venue in what was called the mosh pit, but this was worse and crazy, and when the police released the crowd, after the, the parade was over, the quickest way to get out of that mess was to walk a block over and get into Central Park. And we did that, and as soon as you crossed the street, as soon as you got into the park and some space opened up, it was like a breath of fresh air. There was peace. There was a calm and a quiet in the midst of all of that chaos. And the kids got to climb on some rocks that were there and we had a moment to just take a breath. And uh, when we, well, while that, that uh, analogy, that story, it, doesn't, it pales in comparison to the peace and the calm that we can find in Christ, it's just a little snippet of, of perhaps you can bring to mind a, a time in your life when you were in a chaotic situation and then you got to a place of peace. And Christ can offer that to us in that eternal sense in a sense that we can't even explain, and words just don't do it justice. So we do the best we can. But understanding this peace, understanding that that peace is available to us, is something that can carry us through the hardest and darkest of times. When we turn on the radio and we're told that all is lost, we can turn that off and open up our Bibles and understand that that we are not if we are in Christ. So as we think about this idea of having peace in the midst of chaos, we want to look at a couple of things to focus our minds. And daily as we 
when we wake up in the morning, what is our focus? You know, oftentimes, and, and I'll admit to uh, getting out of bed and running to the coffee pot and finding, to, finding that first sip of coffee for the day. Uh, but what is it that we really look for? What is our focus in, in our daily lives? Do we focus on our job as Christians? As we were looking this morning in the uh, uh, Bible study class, we were looking at uh, the parable of the, uh, of the feast where the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the master sent out for uh, people to come to his feast and no one would come. And uh, he sent out to let everybody in, not just his friends and family. And uh, as we, we think about this peace that we have in our daily lives, do, are we fighting against it? Is our focus on ourselves like those that we read about in that parable this morning that, well, I have this to do and I have that to do. We, and of course we have jobs and of course we have things to do every day. Uh, there are those things that are going to be on our list that we have to do, but do we focus our time on pure things? If you'll turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 4, let's go over there for just a moment. Philippians chapter 4. And then starting at verse 4 in Philippians 4. We read, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, as we think about our daily focus, is it on pure things? If you've got a device like an iPhone in your pocket or a computer on your desk and you venture out into social media land, it's probably not a far stretch to think that before too long you come across something that is not pure, that is not praiseworthy. And that's, that's, that's my microcosm for life, really. You drive down the road and and you might come across a billboard that is not pure. You might come across someone's speech who is, that is not pure and not, not lovely. It is not anything near praiseworthy. But what is our focus? Do we choose to focus on those things? Do we choose to uh, turn our heads away from those things and look at, look at things that are, that are pure? I hope that we do. And, and I don't stand up here to tell you that I'm perfect. <clears throat> I understand the struggles. I understand the, the issues that come about with those things. But we have to be strong. And we have to try our best to make sure that we are focusing on pure things. And, and it does. It does take work. And it takes diligence. And it takes study to strengthen our minds. If we look at Psalm 37... Going back into the book of Psalms, 37 at verse 7. Go over there for just a minute. At Psalm 37 and at verse 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. You know, we can be focused on so many things. And one of the things that, especially in the age of social media, and the chaos that ensues from that, we can look at, at, at those that, that prosper that, that perhaps we think, well, why is it that they prosper and I don't? Or we turn on the news and we see all of the, all of the people prospering uh, at the hands, or at the shedding of blood, you know, and uh, the 
evil things that go on in the world and we wonder how that can be. But that shouldn't be our focus. Our focus is to follow Christ. Our focus is to follow his word. Our focus is to think on those good things. If we want to have peace in the midst of this chaos, you won't find it in a healthy bank account. You won't find it in your family. You won't find it in those people that are supposed to be the closest to you. Because eventually, them being human beings, they'll, they'll, they'll make you feel something that is not so peaceful. It'll, it'll be something that, that happens in, in, in your relationship that you realize that perhaps you're not going to get that peace from them. A lot of people look to others, other human beings, for that peace and comfort in life. But Christ is the only place that we can find it. We've been told so uh, in the scriptures, we just have to listen. If we want this peace in the midst of chaos, we have to take the heat, take heed of the warnings that we find in scriptures, in the scriptures against foolishness. There's a lot of foolishness going on in this, in this world. There's a lot of foolishness that we can get ourselves involved in. If we go over to the book of Proverbs, let's go over there for just a moment. Proverbs 29, and then at verse 11. Proverbs 29, and then at verse 11 we read, A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Now, how, how often is it that we want to just vent our feelings? Yeah, I've been guilty of that. It feels good sometimes to get some things off of your chest, uh, understandably, but to just lay it all out there, to open your mouth and insert your foot, so to speak, uh, that's foolishness. And uh, we, should, we should be wary of that. We should be careful again. This lesson wasn't meant to be a, a lesson on social media, but boy, don't we get ourselves into a lot of foolishness there. Uh, in the age where we, when we talk to people, we don't actually talk to them face to face, but we talk through text. And there's another, there's a whole nother, uh, a whole nother way of talking there. And sometimes the nuance of face to face conversation is lost in those words in a text message. Uh, if we want to have peace in the midst of chaos, we'll, we'll avoid this foolishness. We'll avoid uh, just venting out all of our feelings. But to filter those things that we feel through, through what, the way God would have us to handle those things. Let's go over to the book of James. James chapter 1. And at verse 19. James chapter 1 at verse 19 says, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Now we need to be careful that we don't vent all of our feelings. We need to be careful that we don't lash out and try to take care of the situation. Lash out and try to uh, make our wrath you know, fix things. Uh, if I, I would venture a guess that each one of us sitting here today can think back to a time when we've vented all of our feelings out and perhaps gone further and uh, used our wrath to try to fix the situation. And I would venture also a guess that that didn't work and that perhaps it got you into more trouble and more heartache along the way. Uh, in, in chapter 3 of the book of James, go a little bit further in the book there in the first four verses, say, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, also able, a able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. We have to control our mouths. We have to speak carefully. 
We have to be those that uh, chooses our words wisely. It's a, a lost art in today's world. Again, we see all of the venting, everything out there going on in the world today, and, and it hasn't brought us anywhere. It brings us into fights at every turn, uh, whether it be in the political realm and especially in the religious realm. When we, when we talk to people about, uh, about the scriptures, we lose, we lose so much credibility if we exhibit the foolishness that we, and the chaos that comes from it. Uh, that we see uh, here in the scriptures. In 1 Corinthians 3, let's go over there and talk about, talk about being caught in our own craftiness. You know, if we uh, uh, are left to our own devices, we, we will show ourselves for, for who we are uh, soon enough. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and at verse 18 beginning, <clears throat> it says, Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. You know, we... Uh, again, you think about all of the criminals that have been caught because they thought they were so smart. They, they thought that they could weave together a plan to get away with, in some cases, murder. And yet, in, the, in, in their own craftiness, they were caught. Who are we to think that we can hide from the Lord? Who are we to believe that, that we can be one that... that uh, that knows everything, that our craftiness and our mind is going to be stronger than the Lord's. I and mean, that's exactly what probably you and I have all done at some point in our lives, and perhaps, uh, perhaps some of us are doing now, that we are trying to pull a wool over the eyes of, of the Lord, and, and we understand what perhaps what his word says. And then we, we go ahead and do what we want, in the corner, away from the prying eyes of, of perhaps the other brethren. But uh, nonetheless, the Lord knows. The Lord knows what, what goes on. And that's part of the foolishness that carries on the, the chaos in this world. When we think a little bit more, just go on one step further and then the lesson will be yours. To have peace in the midst of this chaos, we have to have discipline. And uh, this is of course, not an easy thing. It's work. It's hard work. If, if you've ever tried to, to exercise, you understand the discipline that it takes to, to do that on a regular basis. Discipline is key. If we go over, let's go over to the book of Hebrews and Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 at verse 11. It says, Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. If you've ever been a parent, if you've ever been around children that have been left to their own devices, you'll, you'll see what's being said here. Chastening is not joyful. It's not fun to make correction. A lot of times, especially when it's, when it's our children, when we love them so much and we see them and we don't want to make them unhappy. I'm reminded of, I probably told you before, but years ago, Angela taught kindergarten and there was a student in her class that was just unbelievable. The words that, as I understand, that would come out of his mouth. And he would get written up and when the mom would pick him up, uh, you know, all of these things would be laid out and the mom worked late and said, well, I just, I hate to be mean to him when we go home. I don't really want to punish him because I don't get to spend much time with him. And I don't know what happened to that child today, but you can venture a guess what would have happened if that continued on. You know, that was 20 years ago, so he's an adult now. But um, discipline is key. If we, if we have a hope of 
for ourselves of making it through the difficulties of this life, if we have a hope ourselves of living a Christ-like life, we're going to have to discipline ourselves. We're going to have to be disciplined by the, by the scriptures and take those words that hurt from time to time and, and make good use of them. Because that correction will yield the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Without it, we'll be swallowed up by all of the things in this world. We'll be swallowed up by sin. And then in the end, we'll find ourselves in a place that we don't want to be. Discipline is key to making peace in the midst of chaos. And again, we've already mentioned it is, of course, it's hard work. It's hard work to, uh, to be disciplined. It is not fun. It's not the first thing that you want to do when you get up in the morning. Again, if you're in the habit of exercising, it's the last thing that you want to do uh, in the morning. But we understand that it, it pays off in the end a little bit. 1 Corinthians 9 at verse 27 says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be should become disqualified. You know, that's, uh, of course, Paul knowing all too well that he needed to have, he needed to have this discipline, that he needed to buffet his body, as the King James says. And we need to do the same thing. Sometimes our body tells us one thing, yet we know, we know that the other is the right way to go. And we need to have discipline to, to follow through with that. And as we uh, think on these things, as we think about having peace in the midst of the chaos of this world, and the chaos of this life, we have to make Christ our focus. There's no other way. We have to avoid the foolishness that so easily rears its ugly head in this world. We have to avoid the idea that we can craft our way through all of the lies and deceit and still make it through in the end to heaven. That will not work. If we're going to have peace in the, midst of, in the midst of chaos, we have to be disciplined and disciplined in the word. So as we think on these things and, and bring this lesson to a close, are you seeking peace in Christ? You know, in Matthew 6, and verse 33, we read, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. You can go back yourself and read the context there about all of the things that were spoken of in the previous verses, the things that the Lord knows that we need. If you're seeking peace in Christ, seek him first. Seek him first above the baseball game. Seek him first above the social activity. Seek him first above all of the things that, that cause the chaos in, in your lives. Sometimes it's a hard choice. Sometimes, sometimes it, it, it feels like discipline, and, and it is. Lastly, let's re just recall what we read at the very beginning. As we began, so we'll end this lesson. Psalm 62, of verse 5 beginning says my soul wait silently for God alone for my expectation is from him he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense I shall not be moved in God is my salvation and my glory the rock of my strength and my refuge is in God if you sit here today and you need refuge from this world and you have not put on Christ in baptism if you've heard the word and you believe that he is and you're willing to confess him before men, the waters of baptism are ready for you. If you're willing also to repent and turn away from the sinful ways of this world and to walk towards Christ, seeking him, seeking that peace in the midst of this chaotic world. If you're ready to put on Christ in baptism, the waters are ready. If you need the prayers of the saints, as we often fall short, as I'm often saying, and I, I'll say it again, we are a family in Christ. And as we gather here today, as we're commanded, as it was prayed by Rick at the beginning of this, of this uh, time together, that it's hopeful that we want to be here. And as we are a family together, wanting to be together, realize we want to be together in heaven as well. And we want to do what we can to help one another. So if there is a need among the brethren, 
let it be known. Whatever your need may be, please, again, let that be known as we stand and sing.